welcome to Solace Nero, I'm Noah, and today we'll be talking about Lisa Mary Young. Um, Lisa Mary Young was a 21-year-old girl who went missing on June 30th, 2002. Um, she was a very independent athletic woman and also a very healthy person. Um, she went missing while she was on a night out celebrating uh, 21st birthday of a friend of hers, Dallas Hughes. Um, so that night, earlier that night, they were out drinking at several different places, and they'd met a man who had a car that they all liked, and offered to drive them to a party. They were at the party for a while, until, um, Lisa got hungry, and because she was a vegetarian, she wanted to go get some healthy food. Uh, well, some vegetarian food that was healthy. So the same man who drove them there, who they'd just met that night, decided to, well, offered to give her a lift somewhere. So she was last seen leaving the party with that man. Um, that, yeah, all of her friends had met earlier that night. Um, so after she had left the party, after a little while, Dallas Hughes he received a text from her saying, come get me, they won't let me leave. And that was the last that Lisa Mary Young was ever heard of. Or ever heard from. Um, so, when a missing case like this comes up, so when she didn't call or text her parents the next day, they knew something was wrong, cause she always notified them. Um, so the first person that they probably would have looked into was the man who drove him around. Now it could have, some people initially would think maybe that this never was solved because they couldn't find him, but they did identify him, but no arrest was made. Um, I couldn't find who, like his name and why there was no arrest made. I looked, I looked for a while, um, but I couldn't find out the reason, but there was probably a reason that made it not him. But she was with someone due to that last text. Um, the reason that it was odd that she, no, that she just went missing and didn't notify anyone was because the very next day she was going to move to a new apartment and start a new job. Um, so just her suddenly not showing up definitely raised suspicion straight away to her parents. When they initially called up to say she was missing, they didn't accept her call because she wasn't gone for long enough. So they had to wait before calling back. But Lisa Mary Young's parents didn't really wait. They started it themselves and then the police got involved. Um, quick side note, there will be a lot of beanbag sounds in this episode. It's more comfortable than sitting on the floor. Um, so, to this day, she's just been put on top of files of like several hundred missing indig indigenous or murdered women reports. There's, they've just pretty much put her case there, and it hasn't probably has not been looked at since. But um, her. Um, Lisa Mary Young, her mother still, like, still has heaps of hope and continues to this day, which is a fair few years later, that's 16 years later, if my math is right, um, hopefully my math is right, it's only 9.30, <laughs> um, so yeah, her mother, 16 years later, is still raising awareness for her missing daughter. Um, so, due to around this time, there was a lot of people sort of starting to think that, the, whether it's true or not, I'm not to say, um, but they started to think that the police actually never really cared to look into her file or any of the files of the missing indig or missing or murdered indigenous women around this time. So they reckon that her case might not have even really been 
looked at at all and was pretty much just instantly thrown and never opened again. Um, so yeah, so pretty much from day one, there was a lack of effort put into this. And pretty much the man in the car, who was a missing lead, is pretty much the only, is one of the only suspects that had much, re like there was several arrests connected to the case, but not many that were like, initial, like pretty much just directed at that one case. They were usually arrested for other matters and brought in for questioning for other cases that ended up leading to questioning for that one while they were in there. Um, but yeah, there has never been an arrest made. Um, since this time, they probably couldn't check cell phone tower records to figure out where the text came from. So they haven't been able to pinpoint who or where she was and who wasn't letting her leave there. Um, she was uncomfortable um, and wanted to leave, but somebody or somebody's was not letting her. Um, there are many, like, pretty much theories of this case. One of them suspects that the driver of that car had set this out and planned to meet her that night and wait until he had the chance to drive her off and drop her somewhere off somewhere else near the party, probably. Or, yeah, drop her off somewhere near the party, so, and to people who obviously either wanted her or somebody that night to do something, There's, and pretty much had an alibi because his car would have, or even if he drove back past wherever the party was, that way people would have seen him gone past and assumed he dropped her off. Um, so there's theories that he dropped her off somewhere. These are just theories that I've found. Um, there's also another theory, which is a pretty unlikely, considering she was moving the next day. This theory like suggests that she ran away because something was wrong with her life there, and pretty much that guy dropped her off at the party, and then from there she ran off. Which is quite unlikely since the next day she was moving and had a new job, like starting the next day. It's a bit odd for her to go missing around pretty much a big part, a big point in her life. And it, there's nothing that says that she was unhappy. She was very athletic, independent, and was a health fanatic. No, well, just a healthy person, probably. I don't know whether fanatic or not. Um, so, yeah, that theory is ruled out. The one about the guy in the car? Well, that's up for debate. I'm not going to choose a side, because like, I tried doing more research, but I haven't found why he was let off, or his name at that. Um, now, Lisa Mary... Young, one of her friends was a songwriter and wrote a song for her. Alright, so the song is, there. there is a song dedicated to Lisa, um, it's titled Lisa's Song by Alison Crow. I apologize if I got that name wrong. A L L I S O N space C R O W E. Um, I definitely recommend looking or well, listening to the song. It is a very good song. Um, you can just, you can find it on YouTube. Um, yeah, so that song was dedicated to her by her friend, who is the singer. Um, and that concludes this episode. I forget how many episodes. Uh, that's a, ongoing theme it seems at this point um yeah so that's it for this week oh depends if i feel like recording again recording something else um well it's the end of this 
Solus and Emerald for this week. And I will be back next week. And another apologies for all the beanbag sounds. Bye.